Hey guys, Jonathan here with Short Term Dojo. I wanted to take an opportunity to put together a very basic case study for you today. I have gotten a tremendous amount of questions on asking for a real life example of one of the properties in our portfolio that was successful. And I thought it might make sense to actually use something that could be applied to almost any potential investor out there who's a little bit nervous about understanding the financial projections for a particular short-term rental. So this is going to represent a property that I feel is almost in the proverbial middle of nowhere that anybody could probably find a source of capital to acquire this with significant successful achievement at the end of it, okay? So this is a real life case study of a very simple house, full transparency with the address in here, the numbers that we have achieved, the expenses that we had, the acquisition price, the revenue, um, the revenue that we've earned over a 27 month period. So I want to dive into this today because again, I'm trying to position this as a basic case study. I'm going to do more of these that become a little bit more advanced. But for this, I feel that this applies to anyone out there who can come up with roughly $50,000 in capital to acquire their first property, a very simple to understand piece of real estate and something in a city that isn't necessarily well known or, or someone is thinking that it might be in a beach or the mountains or a lake or something that they think is the reason that a property would generate so much revenue, okay? So let's dive right in here. I'm gonna be tr try to be as simple as possible. The property here is in Rock Hill, South Carolina, okay? It's 637 Cawthon Street, Rock Hill, South Carolina. You can Google that, find it on Zillow. This particular property is a three bedroom, two bath house in the front, and it comes with a one bedroom, one bath cottage at the back of the house. What's gonna be interesting is you could actually cut off the property revenue for the cottage in the back, and this would still be a profitable deal. But I'm just highlighting a very simple example that happened to come with a one bedroom, one bath at the back of the property, okay? So three bed, two bath, 637 Cawthon Street, Rock Hill. Where's Rock Hill? Well, it just happens to be near where I live. Uh, the most important draw for people that to come stay that I think the average person would understand is that they have a very nice sports center that has 15,000 seats that someone would typically understand, okay, maybe people are going there for, for sporting events, which absolutely does contribute to the people that stay at this property. But by no means is this uh, is that the, a large, the lion's share of why people stay uh, in this particular property, which I classify this as a short-term rental, not a vacation rental. Uh, you can watch some of my other videos to see the explanation of the difference. But again, this is where someone just needs short-term rental housing for a myriad of reasons, okay? 637 Cawthon Street, Rock Hill, three bedroom, two bath, house in the front, comes in with a one bed, one bath at the very back of the property. In 2020, purchase price was 265K. Story behind this is it was, I believe it was actually listed for something about 280. I had a feeling uh, that it wasn't gonna appraise for that much, which it did not, which gave us 15K off the price, although I would have paid 280 easily, as you can see with the numbers as I go through them. But essentially, why we targeted this was that this was a flip from an investor who must have not done a lot of these over invested in the property. I, I would imagine they made about 10, 15K, if not broke, broke even. It took about 12, 18 months to renovate this. They did a really beautiful job, which in turn allowed me to look at it as a turnkey Airbnb to be <laughs> with just furniture and Kim and I's touch, okay? So we picked up this property ultimately for 265. The down payment, $52,000 furniture and supplies to get this going was 12,000. So all in cash out of pocket was $64,000. Now, what was interesting about this, this was our best speed to market property. What I mean by that is we put ourselves a goal of literally two weeks 
to get furniture in there, supplies, set it up, get it listed, get a booking. We actually put this on Airbnb and VRBO with the original photos from the listing and it didn't have any furniture in it because we knew that people would book. We had a track record of, of our other reviews and we said furniture coming, property will be set up soon, had a two week deadline, had a booking on this property before we actually had new photos with all the furniture in it. But gave us our, ourselves a two week timeline and was the best performing speed to market performer that the job we've ever done, which again, we gave ourselves two weeks to get up and running, which we did. Just to break down the numbers here, okay? So 64K out of pocket, it's a turnkey Airbnb, picked it up from someone who renovated the property, did a beautiful job, but probably spent way too much time and way too much money only way to, only to walk away with X amount of dollars that they did. We picked it up with the intention to cash flow this as a short-term rental. As you'll see, it was a very, very good decision. But let's talk about the payment here for a second, right? So our payment was $1,800 a month. It was actually very good terms in terms, I think it was like 4% interest rate. The reason why this 1800 is so high, uh, the taxes for that in South Carolina, if you don't live there are extremely high. And I didn't mind paying that because again, the, the numbers made sense. So about that translated into almost 21 and a half, about $22,000 in note payments to cover the property through the year. There's two other line items here, utilities, which was about $4,200 a year which is your internet, your power, sewer, water, trash, gas, whatever it is, a couple other things there, but about $4,200 a year. And then our cleaning fees, which was roughly $8,500 for that year. So for a total of $34,000 in operating costs, this is what it took, this is what it cost to operate this property. Now, just one thing to keep in mind, naturally you won't have those costs should you do a long-term rental, but I want it to be crystal clear with the numbers that we are going to have, that we transpose that with a risk mitigation factor of if we were not able to do this or it would not be profitable enough, we could switch back to long-term rental rates and be just fine. So if you took this away at $22,000 a year, this would probably rent for about $2,200 a month. So not great. I certainly wouldn't pick it up to be a long-term rental, but it was worth the risk should I not be able to do this or it just did not perform well that we could at least pay the note and then ultimately uh, move on from the property if it didn't work. Okay, so just I just want to highlight that fact. But again, $34,000 a year to operate this property as a short-term rental with the required expenses. So let's jump over to our profit. In 2020, we launched this in October, so I want to be clear on that. That was our launch date. And we generated $23,000 for the last three months of the year. So that covered more than what the third of our payment and utilities and our expenses were. So we were profitable even at 23K for that year. But that just kind of set us up. It allowed us to get the listing going, get some five-star reviews, build a little bit of traction, move up the algorithm ranking. And then we went into our next two full 12-month periods which the first full 12 months, we generated $87,000 in revenue. And last year in 2022, we generated $90,000 in revenue. So for a total of roughly 200K in 27 months, if you break the simple math down, we generated 200K in revenue, 27 months minus the $82,000 roughly in operating expenses, which leaves us with a yield of $118,000, which then, and here's where it really gets good, is now I can break out the $64,000 that I put into this deal at the beginning just to get it run. That was my all-in cash. So if you extract that, you're left with $54,000 in pure profit after 27 months. I'm playing with house money at this point. I've made money. All my expenses are covered. All of my contribution, my cash contribution to begin with is covered. And I want to highlight because I didn't want to make this too complicated of a video, but this does not include any tax benefits that we absolutely did receive. 
This does not include a principal pay down, which I do want to highlight. I used a commercial lender for this $1,800. So while the taxes does increase that payment, this was also based on a 20 year amortization, which means I'm contributing more every month to principal than if I had gotten a conventional loan. So the principal payoff is not even included in here, but that is technically profit that I'm receiving. And it also does not include any appreciation that we had on the property. I don't, I shouldn't say I don't ever calculate those when looking at a deal, but for a property like this, you don't even have to look at those benefits to see that in 27 months to make $54,000, recoup all of your cash invested up front and not apply these benefits that this was going to be a good deal. So I use this as a very simple, basic case study of a property that is probably in almost all of our backyards, if you will. There's nothing particularly special about this. It was well done from a renovation standpoint. It looked attractive without furniture. It looks even more attractive with our design and with our furnishings. But at the end of the day, this is not an amazing lake house that we have. This is not an amazing mountain home that we have. This is not an amazing beach home that we have. This isn't in a remote area that's amazing to travel to from a vacation perspective. This has housed individuals, guests, people, families that needed a place to stay for a myriad of reasons that have nothing to do with being on vacation. And we found this right in our backyard. So I use this as a guide to say it is absolutely possible to run the numbers on many homes in locations that you would think would not perform based on your own misunderstanding of the industry. And I hope that this highlights that it is absolutely possible to make great revenue in a short-term rental that you would never think would be an excellent acquisition, okay? And so just to highlight in the beginning of this video that I believe the one bedroom, one bath at the back of the property did $40,000 in those 27 months. So if you removed one of the dwellings completely, I'm not even going to remove any of the expenses that I added to the equation. You're still walking away with a free asset and $14,000 in your pocket. Okay, so again, this is a very simple case study. I've been getting asked this quite a bit about give me a real life example of something that's in my wheelhouse that I ate both could afford from a capital perspective and something that's simple to understand. And I'm not going to be looking at these $1.6 million beach houses or mountain homes that have exploded in value. These still exist. Yes, the interest rates are higher. This is of March of 2023. So we know interest rates are starting to move like crazy from literally about a year ago today. But again, this is something that's applicable to many homes in many areas as long as they're allowed to be rented from a short-term rental perspective. If you found this helpful, you know what to do. Please subscribe below. Please leave any questions you have down below. I'll do my best to answer. I hope this has been helpful and have a great day.